to raise your hand. Okay. So how many, just keep your hand up if you're lying right now, just so I have a good, um, because what's really exciting is that, um, if you read the book, <clears throat> you probably want to hear the stories behind the stories in the book, right? Cause if you look at, if you think about it, all, all, um, all books get edited out, edited down. Where's my clicker? I just had to say no, right? All, all books get edited. So even like when I read it, sometimes I cringe because I'm like, oh, they left out the best parts, okay? So some of my, what I feel like I'd like to do in the next hour and a half that we're together, 60, 70 minutes before we set up the rest of the day, is kind of give you a framework that then will set up the tone for the next day and a half, two days. I'm, I'm kind of time is messed up in my head. Um, because my belief is, uh, John Tar walks up to me, John's in the back, John's a brilliant marketer, brilliant high ticket, he sells like five, seven thousand dollar, um, packages all day long, he's got a couple other businesses, but he said to me, he goes, you know, I was looking for a time to leave the room and just work on stuff, he goes, but your lineup is totally stacked, and, uh, I'm like, you're right, we worked, I mean, I, my friends, most everybody on this thing is, are my friends, and they are doing me a favor by being here, and they're doing you a favor. So if you see them, you spend time with them, please understand that I, I'm not paying any of these guys to be here, except except one, but you'll you'll get it why I pay him. Uh because he charged me, I guess. And the rest didn't charge me. So I <laughs> and uh no, Jesse's the only one who got uh, a fee. And um so please understand that they came here for you, okay? And um I want to take you back. So so I grew up in a family of 13 kids, blue collar family where my belief system growing up was that I was going to be, uh, an electrician, right? And to this day, I couldn't, I couldn't even, um, I couldn't do anything with my hands. Like I'm, I'm the most non-handy person in the world. My mom had always told me like, well, eventually you're gonna have to figure it out. And I was like, mom, I, I just, you know, I, I, I never really could. Um, I got lucky that I was able to play volleyball and go away to college, and I got a scholarship there. Started in nursing, my nursing degree. And um, around my junior year, I stumbled across, like, chicken soup for the soul. And I walked into my coach's, um, my coach's uh, coaching office, like his office, and I saw on the, the, the top, it said, Psychology of Winning by Dennis Whaley. Have you ever, any of you remember Dennis Whaley? And then right next to it was Lead the Field by Earl Nightingale. And I was like, hey, coach, can I borrow those? Well, he gave them to me, and two things happened that day. One, he never got those audio tapes back uh, to this day, 20 years later. Um, and two, my life changed. Because it was the first time in my life that, that I actually heard the words that came out of the uh, radio that said, you can literally create whatever world you want because you live in the best country in the world. Now, think about this fact. This is 20-some years ago, and those, those tapes were probably in the 80s. And so America was like the free world where you can do it. Now, if you think about all of us, as you're going to see over the next few days, every, like globalization, technology, social media, price decommoditization, e-commerce, info businesses, high tech, I mean, we have no limitations on what we're capable of doing, right? But this was back, this was back when I was, uh, gosh, I was 21, 22, junior year in nursing, my grades went from A minuses to B pluses to like just flat out C's. I did not care about school anymore. I was done, like emotionally, mentally done with school. And I was like Napoleon Hill, Brian Tracy. All I started writing goals. All these things just flooded into my life. And so at that time, you know, um, so I ended up leaving college, coming home, and. Um, Tell my mom and dad, like, look, I'm not going into nursing. I know I was the first person in our, our family to graduate, but I'm not going in nursing, which, which, which nobody got. Like, nobody understood. They were like, dude, do you understand? Like, you'd be a male nurse. Everyone thought I was like, like, uh, like, that meant like you can just pick up chicks like left and right at the hospital. That's not really what happens. That's on ER. Like, they, what did they call me? Um, what was the, um, what was the, uh, back 20 years ago, what was the, uh, it called me like some, all the nurses had a nickname for me. Like, it was like, uh, not beach body. It was, I'll tell you, it'll come to me. And it wasn't McDreamy. It was some stupid thing like that. And I was, you know, 
ready to get taken advantage of. None of them did, but trust me, I was ready. Um, <laughs> the green light was on my shirt. It just wasn't happening. I don't know. Maybe I lack experience. Anyhow, so, um, so I, I went out, um, so I, that was like one of the first real pivotal points where I had to follow like the gut feeling, the, my heart. And you're going to see a, a pattern here with time collapsing. Like people who do amazing things follow that little like calling that's sitting in their gut or their, their heart. Whatever brought you here, because trust me, like I'm looking, I looked at all the name tags, everybody who's not here yet, or like I guarantee there's a lot of people. I, you know how many messages I got in the last day and a half from people like, Hey bro, sorry, I can't make it. You know, I just, you know, I'm no, no, no. Like oh, keep that to yourself. This is where we're at. This is what's important. You guys right here are important. Okay. Cause something magical is going to happen. And speaking of magic, um, a few years later, I, I started learning accelerated learning skills and I had all this weird, cool opportunities to train under some people, but I'll tell you one cool train that I wanted to start off this, this with before we get into content. I was at this uh, training where we were doing accelerated learning, NLP, like we were, cause it was a team camp. We were, we were going to become facilitators. Like this was the power of being broke. I was able to just go do all these things. And this guy with white hair shows up, older man. I don't even remember his name. And he was the most impactful speaker I've ever seen. And we're all sitting there. We've been training all day. We had a fire pit and we're all sitting there and, um, we had no idea what he was going to talk about, but like the, the head of the, uh, the, um, company said, we have a really special guest and everybody here needs to listen to it. Even though there was no agenda, there was no topic and we had no idea what he was talking about. And so he started the whole thing out by, by grabbing like this white powder out of a pouch. And he said, you know, back in ancient times, they take this powder. And he had a word for it. I don't know what it was, but he called it magic powder. And he, he went around the campfire and he took the, he took the uh, white dust, threw up in the air and like as far as you can see. And then he like pushed it out to the side of our group and he walked all around the group and he went to that side, threw it over there and he brought it all the way back in. And he said, everybody here is now ready for magic to happen. And I'll tell you, I really don't even know what the hell he talked about for the next, you know, like three hours. He just told story after story. But every person in the room, like, just had radical transformations, and everything for them went faster. And I was thinking about our group, and I was like, you know, the, our group here is that you may not know why you're here. You may be doing me a favor, some of the speakers. You, you may be someone who read the book, had no idea, and just, like, it coincidentally popped up in your life. You may have been brought by somebody. And the easy thing for you is to be like, well, what am I going to get out of this? Like, what, what's in it for me? Like, the, you know, but what I'd like to challenge you to think of is that there's somebody in this room who needs you here. Because at some point, you're going to have interactions where you're going to give, and that person's life is going to be affected in some way. And so, um, so just kind of follow me on that. Be okay with magic to happen coincidences to occur and something a breakthrough to happen and today the hard thing for you is is almost going to be you want to grasp on the clarity so much that you're not allowing the process of confusion to take over a little bit okay talk a little bit about that in a second but the first thing i'd like you to do is grab a pen open up to the first page of the, your notebook doesn't matter where if you're on a page just keep it right there go to the white part of the thing and the first question it's a big question is what, what outcome or insight or clarity would you need that if it happened would have the biggest positive impact on your life? So I'll say that again. And you, it should just come up. Like, you know, what, what outcome, what impact or insight or clarity would you need to have the biggest positive impact in your life? If you have so many opportunities on your plate, one of the more positive things you might be looking for is clarity on which opportunity do I focus on. If you have, if you're good at multiple things and you're wondering how do you monetize it and make a living out of it or 
you're making your living off something that on a scale of one to 10 is like a five passion. And your passion is, is now, is still like, um, is not making you the money yet, but you'd like permission to go down the passion, passion path. Maybe this is the next few days where you get clarity on that, right? If you're wondering if you should grow a business a certain way, whether it's online, whether it's in stores, whether it's, you know, through direct mail, are we in the right business? Are we doing things like, you know, what might that be? Do we have a mic, by the way, ready to run if I ask for it? Okay. Cool, cool. Cool, cool. Um, uh, so that's some of the things, right? So, um, uh, you know what? Hey, Chris, Chris, Smith, I'm going to call Ed Clay because Ed always plays full out. So Ed's already written it out. So, um, this is a good way. Uh, this is my buddy, Ed Clay. Ed, why don't you stand up? Let's give it up for Ed. Ed, 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 um, Ed is the host of our mansion party tomorrow night with all the country artists and stars. Um, he does look like a country artist, but, um, you know, he's not. Uh, but, uh, Ed, just introduce yourself real quick and then answer the question. Okay, uh, my name is Ed Clay. Uh, so, uh, what outcome or impact or insight would, uh, I need to have the most positive impact, uh, in my life? My biggest goal in life is to cure cancer. So, uh, it would be an insight on how I could do that as fast as possible. Cure cancer, insight on that. So now real quick, so just for everybody who doesn't know, like, so just really like in, in one minute, explain like this quick backstory of how you got into this. Yeah. So, uh, I, I used to be a professional fighter and, that's how I met Lloyd, actually, through, uh, or rather Ed, through Lloyd Irvin. And uh, when I, I decided I didn't want to do that anymore, I retired in 2012. And um, I was working on, my mom had an incurable disease, so I started studying alternative medicine. And uh, basically, long story short, uh, I thought I had an idea on how to fix it. I bought a hospital in Mexico. She was my second patient. She is now cured. And uh, it's one of the top alternative cancer hospitals uh, in the world. Yeah. <laughs> Chris, do you run over to Laura real quick? Laura, I'm calling on you, girl. Stand up. All right. Introduce yourself, and then what's one, one key thing you want to get out of it? Hi, I'm Laura Catella. Uh, one key thing that I would like to get out of this would be clarity on what to focus on. So what do you do for a living, and what do you mean by clarity? I'm a copywriter. Gonna, how many would like more clarity on what to work on or focus on? Just out of curiosity. How many are unclear whether or not you need more clarity? (laughs) I'm a copywriter and marketing consultant. And what comes with that are a lot of different opportunities to partner in businesses, grow people's funnels. And I have a difficult time choosing from all those opportunities which ones to focus on. Awesome. Cool. Let's give it up. Give it up. Give it up. (laughs) Romza, right behind you, Chris. Uh... Stand Rome, up and introduce yourself. Yeah, Rome. I'm ready standing. I, 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 didn't, I was grabbing my coffee. I, was, I wouldn't pull a short joke like that. No, it's cool. Uh, Rome Zah. Uh, I'm looking to time collapse this new project that we're working on, the nonprofit, where we teach kids in Costa Rica jiu-jitsu and uh, feed them and teach them personal development and spirituality as well. And uh, they're very, like, underprivileged kids. And uh, we started a space. We opened the space, and we have about almost 30 kids in the last month. And we fed them. And uh, I was just telling a few of the guys here that I've never seen gratitude. Sorry, I'm going a little bit further than your question. You're good, dude. Yeah, it's all I've about never it. seen gratitude for food as much as I've seen it in those kids' faces. Wow. And... Uh, because we partnered up with like an organic local farm and he drops off all the surplus at the academy and we just give it out to their families, like a bag of organic greens a week. And uh, it's had like kids crying and uh, it just changed my paradigm in the sense of like what, why I was doing what we were doing with the company. And, uh, awesome. Yeah. All right, cool. Let's give it up for Rome. It's awesome. So before I started learning, like, so, bef- like, so let's just say, like, uh, my first business that actually made any money was my dental marketing. Bu- well, actually, it was profitable was my dental marketing business. 
Before that was my mental toughness for athletes business. Okay, I'll, I'll explain a little bit. And then if you go back one step further, it's, um, I was, uh, I came out of school thinking I was going to be the next Tony Robbins. That's what I really thought I was. Cause I started listening to Tony, I listened to Jack Canfield. Jack, do you guys know who Jack Canfield is? Author of Chicken Soup for the Soul, right? Um, well, Jack, you know, like my big thing was I wanted to be, I wanted to be a speaker and he had this like 10 day event facilitating skill seminar. And, um, my family was great enough. They, um, I got, I, 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 when you don't have money, you got to do what you, 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 when you don't have money, you got to do what you need to do to, to either learn, to learn how to make money, or you need to like do what it takes to get the money. Right. So I wrote a long, like two page essay, sent it into the air and I got a scholarship to go there. And then my family was kind enough at my graduation. They paid for me to go to Santa Barbara. So anyhow, so I, my first experience with like personal growth and personal development, this was my first live experience ever, right? Live always trumps virtual. Even the guys who are watching a little bit on Facebook live, like <laughs> you're just staring at the computer right now, guys. Uh, anyhow, um, so Jack, like we, we were there and learn, I was there like to learn how to be like a motivational speaker and all these things. And Jack did the whole like, well, we got to clean all you guys out. Like meaning we got to take all your paths and lay it all on the table and clean it out, right? So I was, you know, I didn't know any different. I was 23, so I was gaming. I was like, whatever, man, I'll do everything. I, I mean, I, you know, we would sit knee to knee and say, I am scared, and you'd have to finish the sentence. I'm scared, and you'd like, then you'd go to the next person, and then you'd say, I love, and then you'd do that. And I mean, it was a very um, old school cognitive therapy type model of change. <laughs> In fact, <laughs> one funny story on this was um, one day. Um, it was like the most intense day of the thing. It was like you had a partner and my part, I was 23 right out of, uh, college. Um, so I was in pretty good shape. I had all my hair. Everything was great. And, um, my partner was like this 40 something year old blonde hair woman. And, um, we had to do like, this was about like, 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 like total psychotherapy of beating the shit out of the chair in order to get all your anger and pains out. Like, so we line up and here's the chair and we're beat. And at that time, like the worst thing that ever happened to me was the girl I was dating broke up with me. That was it. Man. Well, this woman was like raging. And if you look at like, and I was her partner and, uh, and Jack was like, you know, like if you look at the, the, the processing things, you go like denial, anger, bargaining, whatever, acceptance. And then you had to like love the person that you used to hate and stuff. So she, Went through this process. Well, you guys all know, like, you know, Pavlov's dog. Who's familiar with Pavlov's dog? Like, ring the bell, salivate. Ring the bell, salivate. Dog salivates, right, when you ring the bell. Whatever you're staring at when thinking of something, you associate it to the thing you're thinking of. And so at the end of the whole beating the shit out of the chair, we had to like hug each other and she had to forgive me for all the things I had done, but even though I hadn't done anything, but this was part of the therapy, right? I'm like, Oh, she's like, I love you. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so later that night, we, I find myself walking down the beach with this nice woman. And next thing you know, we're rolling around on the sand, fully clothed. Uh, and the only reason we were still fully clothed was because Jack had one rule at the event. First day, he's like, there's going to be a lot of emotional things going on here. The one rule is you cannot have sex with any other attendee. And so I'm 23, rolling around on the beach with this woman, and all I'm thinking of is like, this is breaking the rule. This is breaking the rule. Oh, my God. So anyhow, n nothing happened there, thank God. And... um <laughs> And my point of sharing this whole long story was during the event, this is the point. There was a lead facilitator there who was um, kind of a savvy guy, really calm, and he seemed to be under control when everyone else was losing their stuff, all this stuff. And I said to him, I'm like, well, what do you, what do you do? Like, what's your background? You know? And he said, oh, well, I'm a master trainer in NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. <clears throat> and I'm like, I've never heard that before in my life. What does that mean? And he said, well, 
I can help people have transformations without knowing all their content. And I was like, well, what does that mean? He's like, all this beating the chair up and all this, like, he's like, we don't need to do any of that stuff. Well, I don't know about you, but that grabbed my attention. Okay. Cause I was like, you mean we could make changes for people rapid without having to do all this crazy stuff. And that stuck. It was a seed planted in my head. Now the next night, Tim Perrin, have you guys heard me talk about Tim at all? He wrote the book Mastery, uh, the new science and technology of personal improvement. This was written like literally late 80s or something like that, but it was the first guy. So he came and spoke that night. And he was, again, he showed up in like khaki pants, gym shoes, T-shirt, and was was had total control of the room. And he was the first guy that I had ever met that had totally a total integrative approach to success. So I read his book and I was like, in chapter one, you see it in time collapsing. There's a very, there's a lot of elements that stuck with me from this. He talks about how success 101, you learn positive thinking, you learn visualization, you learn to set goals, you learn all these things. He goes, but then you go to um, success like 101 implemented is, you're taught, you're taught to like, just pound the pavement harder, hustle more, do the work, do the work, get it done, get it done. And he's like, this resonated with me. He said, there's a point where that no longer works because you burn out. The, like the discipline thing of like, oh, I just got to keep doing it. I got to keep doing it. I got to keep doing it. There's a point where you like just no longer like it. And so then he goes into like, that's where you need a better technology, like a better mental technology. And then he starts talking about, NLP and hypnosis and other stuff. And I was like, damn, this is like good stuff. So I thought I had to go on this trail, which led me to Tony Robbins. So I went to Tony Robbins event. Now, how many of you have been to a Tony Robbins event? Okay. I mean, like, like now Jack Hanfield comes up, Jack's playing his guitar and he's like, hallelujah, we feel better and hug your neighbor. And then you go to Tony, he's like, yes. You got it. And it's just totally, everyone's on chairs and whatever. And so that's cool. But one thing is that somebody was on, on stage and like Tony helped like remove a phobia. And one thing that stuck with me, and this is something I want you to either write down or note. Just note it first. Don't, don't go crazy writing down. You should never have the urge to go follow somebody in a system who's not going to give you their system. And so what I mean by that is that if anybody ever starts teaching a way to do something, but then they don't show you how to do it, to me, that's a red flag. Like, I want a teacher who's going to say, hey, you want to learn about anchoring? You want to learn about carinophobia? Let's, I'll show it to you. It's not a big deal. It's not hard. But what I, so I went out and started going through a lot of the trainers and I went down that pathway. Okay. And so I'll give you one quick story and then we'll, we'll talk about you a little bit. But, um, who's ever heard the story about Danny, the little boy who I helped with, like, uh, who was having nightmares and stuff like that? You ever heard the story? <laughs> okay. None of you guys read my book. It was the frickin' second page of the book. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Someone's like, no, I seriously, I swear to God, I did read it. I didn't know his name was Danny. I thought it was Bobby. You know. <laughs> All right. So I'll tell the story. It creates a framework. Okay. Just so you know, you know. For, for those of you who are looking for like ways to increase your income, like right now, just relax. Okay. I got to share because this is, this is, this is the beginning of when I started learning like the concepts of r rapid things happening rapid where, where the rest of the population thought things should ha happen slow. This is where things started shifting for me internally where I was like, okay, it's, it's not, things don't have to be slow. And so. <sighs> I went and studied under a couple of different practitioners, okay? And so I get a phone call out of the blue, kind of like how Chris got a phone out of the blue. And there was a guy who was like, hey, I have a 12-year-old son who's having nightmares and who won't shower, like won't go into the bathroom by himself. He won't go to bed without the light turned off. Um, and, I, and I think you can help me. And I said to him, I go, all right, well, I go tell, I mean, I could probably help you, but I'm really expensive. I charged him like 200 bucks. It was like, it was my, it was back when I was like reading Dan Kennedy stuff. And he's, you know, you're supposed to act like I'm really, I'm take away, I'm going to take away, sell my way to being awesome. But 
the, the guy lived by my sister's house, so I said, cool, I'll drive over. So I drive over. Now, this is the coolest thing ever. Coolest thing ever, guys, because this kid had been seeing a therapist for one year. He was a great little kid, and I, all his dad wanted to do was tell me everything that was wrong with, like, why this is, like, ruining his life and all that stuff. And I walked into the, up to the door. I still remember this. There was a white frame door. Walked right up. He was like sandwiched in between his mom and dad because they were at the door and his little sister was behind him. And I said hi, smiled at them, and I just looked right past the parents and I said, hey, Danny, I heard you can do some really cool things with your brain. And that might sound simple, but what did I do right there in that like split second? What just happened? We reframed the whole situation. This is him doing stuff. It wasn't stuff that was happening. And so it was awesome. Like, so it took me like literally three minutes to make his fear, his phobia go away. And it was simple stuff, guys. Like just popped him out of the picture, threw it up on a screen, had him uh, make it black and white, rewind it, shatter it. But here's the thing. This is what you really should be asking, right? is because Danny and his parents showed up with like this fear, like this thing that was holding him back, right? And all they wanted was the fear to be gone. That's, that's where everybody stops. So it took like five minutes. It was cool. But what do you do now? So I turned to him and I said, cool, man. Like, I mean, first of all, I don't think the parents would be happy about paying 200 bucks for five minutes work because they didn't know that it was gone. I knew it was gone. And so I said to him, I go, I'm like, dude, do you want to feel awesome everywhere you go? Do you want to experience more confidence in like, what's your favorite things? And he loves sports. So I was like, tell me about baseball, man. Do you want to walk up to the batter's box? And like, when you walk in, you just instantly get a trigger that jolts like a sense of confidence from every, like from your toes to your head. Who's going to say no to that? And then I was like, I stepped back. I'm like, well, what do you love? And he's like, I love, and he's a theater kid. He loves being a theater. Um, and, and the bad thing for the last year and a half, they pulled him out of theater because he, he just had like close, it was the craziest thing ever, guys. So like, check this out. So like when you got fears, when you get fears about like, could be something small and stupid. So you know what his thing was? He watched, um, uh, was that Friday 13th? Yeah, Friday 13th. Um, he watched Friday 13th and he was at a sleepover. So that, think about that. How many scary scenes are in Friday? Think about this. So I was thinking about this. Stephen Shirts. How many scary scenes are actually in Friday? Like actual scary scenes are probably in the movie out of a two hour film. Let's say an hour and a half. Like it's probably what? Five, seven, it's all the anticipation up to the scary scene, right? That makes scary movie good. So there's not a lot. So think about it. Those moments is what just went in depth into his head. And then he took that fear, stuck it in his bathroom, stuck it in his closet, stuck it in his bedroom, stuck it in the theater behind the thing. He couldn't, so the thing was, I didn't tell you this, but like, the thing was, he couldn't go behind the black curtain and wait. Freaked him the hell out. Right? So, so what I, my job was to go, Hey bro, like, cool. You, we just eliminated it. We just erased it. But guess what's going to happen? If we don't install something better to pop out, so you move in a new direction, you know what you're going to have? You're going to have all your friends come up there. Your parents going to be like, how's that thing going? How's that? Uh, like they're, they're going to reinstall the fear back in you. Cause this is the society we live in. We focus on the most emotional charge thing and just keep pounding it. Right. So I went to him and I kind of want to, I want to ask you a couple questions real quick. What is one thing that in the last 12 months you absolutely kicked ass in that when you think of it, you're like, it, it should well up like a bolt of like confidence from your gut up to your chest, to your heart, and it should just fire you up. Like, what is the one thing? And if you don't have one like that, that's that, I think that's one more thing that indicates you're not pushing your boundaries 
and getting your, cause I guarantee the thing that you're going to say, this is what we kicked the butt on or we just totally destroyed that creates so much confidence is something that you set a target that stretched you to make you feel uncomfortable and scary. So like before I did Kokoro camp, I'll tell you a quick little story. When I, I trained for Kokoro camp, it's the 51 hour Howie thing. We talked a little bit about it. So I don't want to, I don't want to go into that, but I'll tell you one thing. The day before Kokoro camp, I fly in, I say goodbye to my kid. I am, uh, I train really, really hard, but you have no idea what you're about to go walk in. None. I went, had lunch with Eddie. I think I saw Jimmy the day before. Drew Kossoff had the therapy room ready for our Drew Kossoff. Drew Canoli had all that. He told me he's going to have the compression pants, which he then gave to you, I think, Jamel. And he, he's like, we're going to have all this stuff waiting for you. But now, but here's the deal. This is what's so cool about this. This is so cool that it scares the hell, it scared the hell out of me, but it was so cool. The day before the event, where at a point you're going to take your phone, turn it off, boom. Say goodbye to your loved ones, say I love you, blah, blah, blah. I can't talk to you for over 50 hours. Then you're going to take all your stuff off. And then at that point, you go out and it's game time, right? But here was what the coolest thing was. The day before, you are all alone sitting by yourself in a crappy motel room with really nothing to do and nowhere to go, alone with your thoughts. And that space of negotiation with yourself is one of the most beautiful moments where you get to define who you're going to be over the next two days, two and a half days, three months, six months, one year. I was talking to Dan Roydman, who you'll meet here shortly. He does not have to do financially what he is launching and doing. You'll hear all about it. He's taking some gutsy moves, but he is choosing to live in this space. And 99% of our population, guess what? Does not even know exists. I was talking to uh, Chris about Kokoro Camp. So for me, I'll tell you, there's, there's three things I did this year that I feel like I totally kicked out. And I'm kind of upset because next week, Next week, it's going to be over a year, so i got to think of something new to kick my ass. Kokoro Camp was definitely one of them. Hell on the Hill was another one. After Kokoro Camp, I said this. I said, uh, I'm, I'm ready to finish the book. The book is ready to be done. It was like one of those like internal triggers, right? And then we launched the book two months ago, and guess what? You're all here now. Whether we bribed you, stole you, grabbed you, told a friend to grab you, whatever, you're here. You're stuck now, right? Um, but so that's the space. So, so when we come all the way to here, what I would like to challenge you to ask yourself is, am I living in this space where only magic and greatness can happen that I have to grind it out in some ways or imagine a world for myself that I'm, I have not asked myself for? Like, are we living bigger? Are we thinking bigger? And so what I had to do with Danny really quickly was I just had to get him to reassociate to when kids are easy to do this with, right? I mean, like I got a text from my son the other night. Like he was watching, I don't know, was, uh, who's the guy who just left, uh, uh, what's that one uh, basketball team to go to Golden State? Uh, Kevin, t- Kevin Durant, right? And if you look at the images, right, on imagegoogles.com, because that's where all the great quotes are. He, he's the one who says like, heart, but I, where, is Lloyd here yet? Lloyd Irvin? No, he's not here yet. We're going to have to give him a hard time. We should all be like, Lloyd, you, 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 tell him he was mentioned like eight times in the first talk and he wasn't here, so he's not going to be mentioned the rest of the, the event. But he, he he has on his fighter's thing, like, hard work always beats talent when talent refuses to work hard, right? My son texts me that. He's only, he was only 11 years old. 11 years old. He actually turns 11 this Thursday. You'll meet him tomorrow. But kids are easy to install this kind of silliness into. Like, oh, this is us. We can go. We, we pretend like we're better than we are. We are superpowers, right? And... So what is something I kicked ass at? The other thing I asked him is I wanted him to be, what is something that you love doing? So, I mean, if you want to write a note on that, I don't care. Like, right, this is me jogging your, your thoughts here. What is something you love doing? And then the third one is, what is something you are absolutely proud of? 
with kids, you gotta, you gotta like, you kinda gotta pull this out of them a little bit. You gotta work them up. Like, well, tell me something you're good at. What's something you're, you know, proud of? What do you mean proud of? Like, so you gotta, what's, what's something you're proud of? And then, so I read this up, man. We did this with Danny where, where I got for 30, 40 minutes, man, we just kept taking this three feelings. And I asked him the question. I was like, well, where in your body does, does the confidence begin? It's a weird question, isn't it? Where in your body does it begin? I don't know. Why don't you ask yourself that? Where does my confidence start? Like for me, it starts right below my, my belly button and then it comes up. Everybody's a little different. But what's really cool is that if you, you let it expand, your shoulders pop back, your breath work comes in and you all of a sudden, guess what happens? Much like that, you feel confident. So what I did for him, is a simple thing. We just call it like a, it's a propulsion system. All you do is like when he thinks about the thing that used to bother him, he's off to the races going in this direction. Right? And so, what I'd like to challenge you with is that a lot of training nowadays focuses so much on uh, non- non-operator mentality so very tactical in the trenches thing and i'll tell you man do we really need an, another way do you really do you not believe that there's enough ways to like like dan's going to show a system rowan has a system vinny has got a system john's got a system uh who else am i missing that's speaking this weekend ed's got a system zeke's got a system you know nate's got a system stefan's got a system Every, there's, there are proven systems in this room that already work, correct? Would you agree with that? 100%. Zero question. And so the real thing, my job, I believe, is to make sure the operator of the model in the system, which is you, is fine-tuned, ready to rock and roll. Make sense? All right, cool, cool. So we're going to do one. We're going to do uh, on page four, <clears throat> principle number one is there's always a... There's always a perspective of the world or point of view that, if taken, will expand your possibility and capability. There's always a, a perception of the world, how people see it, or a point of view that will expand it, if taken. And so the one thing that I'd like you to do is is if you look at it, you got opportunity one, opportunity and oppor three, opportunity two and opportunity three. As the day goes on, your job is to write out your opportunities that you think you have and then ask yourself, who has a perception or point of view of the world that would dramatically expand my opportunity? You with me? Go to the next page, number five. Principle number two, emotional power and mental mastery always supersedes content, tactics, and even strategy. I've never met somebody with a great, uh, I've never, I've met a lot of guys with great strategies who do good things. Uh, let's see, I've never, oh, I've met a lot of mentally tough people with bad strategies. That haven't made it. And I've made, met a lot of people with good strategies with no emotional mastery who haven't made it. And we think about time collapsing. We're not, we're talking about how do we create this system in such a way that you, the operator, get to have the power in your life that you want. So when I talk about power, what, who could tell me what I mean by power? Just out of curiosity. What is power? What's the definition of power? Go ahead. Can we get Roma uh thing? It's really quiet in here, right? I mean, I, I don't know if this is what you mean. It doesn't for, matter what I mean. For me, yeah. Uh, being able to control uh, my emotional and mental state in any situation. Okay. Very good. Cool, cool. Do you guys know what two snaps is? Just like this. Two snaps. Yeah, just do it with me, right? Two snaps. All right. Cause usually when I talk, I'll I, like when I need a drink of water, I'll call on somebody to share something like that 
And uh, when they share, instead of clapping, I'll just go two snaps. And it's just a nice and easy way to do it. All right, cool. Who else has a definition of power? Vinny, what's your definition of power? Um, well, my definition of power, I was talking to Rowan, but I'll, I'll participate. Sorry about no, that. No, it's all right. We'll call somebody else who actually yep. pays attention. Yeah, you should. That'd be great. So. Because I'm a loser, so uh, actually, you know, but really for me, power, in the context, in the context yeah. of like what we're talking about, uh, you know, I, I really think it's it's something that I've been working, yep, I think it's something I'm working through in my life. That um, I was talking to someone about this this morning. I think uh, bigger thinking and having a mindset designed towards a goal and clarity is huge. But I, I feel like lately in my life, I've been focusing on this idea of being tolerant of things that aren't good and I'm allowing that to drag me down or pull me in directions and so power is having the ability to remove things that um, don't be tolerant of things like bad behavior by employees or even smaller thinking by yourself or negative thoughts power is the ability to overcome uh, the tolerance of things that are dragging you down love it all right two snaps for many yeah or clap for it doesn't matter all right cool uh Jamel Jamel's over here. Raise your hand. Stand up, please, just so Anna knows where she's going. Or there's Chris right there. Thank you. Um, I come from an engineering background, so power is like force times distance over time. Um, so wait, slow down now, okay? Just because just because you're a NASA engineer and you oh, yeah. wanted just that that was that was his way actually of totally just demonstrating authority and power. Like just because I have like I'm smarter than all of you guys, I uh, this no, is my was, quantum <laughs> physicist uh, definition. That was a disclaimer. Right? Okay, um, slow down a bit just so we can hear you. Yeah, power, I believe, if I remember, I haven't been an engineer for years. Let me bring that back, take that that power away. Um, it's force times distance over time. So it's kind of like how much energy you're putting in, how far you're moving something, and how fast you're doing that all, all right. at the same time. So even in, in, in the real world, like the definition of power is exactly what we want to do. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. Two snaps. Anyone want to share? Phoenix? Uh, my definition of power is the ability to change one situation into another by your design. Cool. Awesome. Two snaps. Which kind of leads me to then, like, what's the, like, when you look at the, so power means a lot of different things based on you, right? And then, so the other thing is, um, but all of you mentioned, with the exception of Jamal, but all of you mentioned uh, a, a presupposition, a presupposing that you have control underneath, uh, a control over those uh, situations, which actually you did too. Does that make sense? So what we have done collectively as a group, whether you like it or not or whatever, is we have chosen to be outliers of society and go do that. My wife was telling me, we were at dinner the other night, and there's this new uh, kids movie. It's like the school for Pe peculiar children. Does anyone know? Am I saying it right? And she was explaining to me how we're just having dinner and – she explained to me how, like, the, the grandchild is the only one in the family who can see the bad people. And the bad people come, or the monsters come, and they, like, rip out the eyes of the... She said it was really bad, because we had, like, three kids in our bed crying from nightmares. And trust me, the whole thing I did with Danny is a lot harder with your own children, because we're like, it doesn't work! Oh, I can't chatter it around! I want you to sleep with your bed! All right, just get in the bed. <laughs> I know. You know, one day we will touch again on each other, honey. By the way, the best, the best, I get all these messages and half of them are from you guys. Anyone who wants like message me on Facebook, they're like, hopefully I'm not interrupting number eight, but I had a quick question for you. I'm like, <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, for all the married people in the world, you understand what sex is like after marriage. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Actually, I should say after, then you go like 10 years of marriage and then <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. So anyhow, what the hell were you just talking about? Okay, so she said, she said, it's, it's, a, these people, the, the, the grandfather and the grandson it skips, a, this is good stuff, man. It skips a generation. And he's able to see the monsters that no one else can. I'm sitting there with my fork, go down. And I said to my wife, I go, he just described my whole life right there. But the difference is, I see the good people when no one else can. And I have a funny conclusion that everybody in this room are the same way. 
right? Because the only reason you would go down this path is you see the world differently than everybody else. It's the only reason, right? And so, like Vinny's uh, definition of power of, well, I can control, what he really says, I can control my circumstances. He said the same thing, okay? There's a presupposition that if you understand the what it is, you can control your circumstances. But there's something that even comes before that, which is like my willingness to give myself permission to be allowed to not only control my circumstances, but then also enjoy the riches of it because you are the one taking the risk, right? So I want to show you two little, quick little, uh, can we cue those videos up? I don't know if Jerry's around here or what. Yeah. So I'm going to show you two quick little videos. One of of, is of rock, the rock. No confusion. And the other one is J.K. Rowling. And we're going to do a small exercise. During the exercise, I'm going to give you about 12 minutes, okay? During that time, if you have to peek, I know I may just sit in the room. I'll let you go for a little bit out there. Um, grab coffee. I will do like, we'll do, a, we'll do a working break. Is that cool? So how many agree, how many, how you, how many of you like what we're doing so far? It's good stuff. Great. You know, like it's a little different. I, I really str- I'll tell you, I, I'm going to share something personal with you. I had a PowerPoint deck of a hundred slides. But I was like, you know, these guys, you guys, need to hear the stories that built this system. Because the system is, like, my next book is going to be called Life's Whisper. Um, and I, I don't know the subtitle yet. But, but I had to write this book because this is the book that if I got hit by a car, I hate saying stupid things like that. But if when, my kids now have my roadmap for, like, conquering and, and, and creating. The next books are not going to be about conquering and creating. They're going to be more about finding your calling, following your life's purpose, following the thing that makes you feel good, identifying your superpower, becoming the best you possibly can. Even though it is in this book, we're going to go deeper into it in those things, helping people to have those transformations. So, so I, I, hopefully you're enjoying this where it's a little more free flowing, uh, but the feedback I got from a lot of you coming was you wanted something different than what you get everywhere you go. Is that fair? And I just, I wanted to do something different. So, so what I do a lot of, so, um, there's a concept called modeling. You've all heard it, right? Modeling. Okay. There's a couple of rules in modeling. I'll give you a couple of simple rules because, because what we're going to be doing all weekend or all week is modeling. And so time collapsing assumes is one of the ingredients that we find people that we're going to model and then we go that we like what they're doing and then we go take what's in their neurology and we stick it in our own. The doorway to that is if I'm an athlete, if someone physically does something, I can physically replicate it and I could do it literally. It's very easy to do with athletes because like when I would box with Ed, Ed, he does it, I do it. Don't have to really think, right? But what I'm really curious about is the, uh, is this good to go? I might have you flip it to this real quick. I want to do, take three minutes to teach this concept because if I don't teach it, you guys may miss some things. Actually, don't worry about it. I need my, uh, and I'm going to need my white pen. We'll do it after the break. Doesn't matter. I'll, I'll show it in a second. The doorway to understanding people's internal world is what? Who can tell me what it is? What's the doorway to the soul? Who just said that? What'd you say? Language. So when people talk about their philosophies or things, just listen to the language. They're giving you everything you need to know, whether it's to sell them, whether it's to motivate them, whether it's to help them transform. And so when you listen to like The Rock and JK here, listen to like the, if you took their language and made it literal on yourself, what images pop up in your own mind? And um, just, just enjoy that. But that's how we're going to start doing it. I'll explain it a little more as we go. When you listen to Dan, you listen to Jeff Usner. Is Jeff here, by the way, yet? Is Jeff, Jeff all right? He's, he's driving here? Oh, good. Well, that's a big difference because he, he, he lives where? That doesn't matter. Okay, where? He's, he's driving. He's being driven. 
Hopefully, hopefully not to Memphis there around. All right, here we go. All right, let's, let's play the rock here. One of the most important things you could realize is that you're not alone. You're not the first to go through it. You're not gonna be the last to go through it. And oftentimes it happens. You just, you feel like you're alone and you feel like it's only you and you're in your bubble. And, and I wish I had someone at that time who, who could just pull me aside and say, hey, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. So I wish I knew that. Just gotta remember. Hold on to that fundamental quality of faith. Have faith that on the other side of your pain is something good. After about a month and a half of staying in that little apartment and cleaning, I got a phone call from the head coach of the team who cut me, the head coach of the Calgary Stampeders. He called me and he said, hey, I know we cut you, but I'd like you to come back. I said, okay, I appreciate that, coach. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll think about it. And he said, okay, great. I hung up the phone, and um, my dad said, you're going to do it, right? I said, no, I don't think so. I think I'm done with that. And he goes, what? I said, my gut tells me I'm done. He said, what are you going to do? I took a deep breath. I said, I'd like to get into the business. He said, what business? I said, the wrestling business. He says, you are throwing it all away. It is the worst mistake you will ever make. He said, you're ruining your career. I said, maybe I'll be no good. But I feel like in my heart, I have to do this. And I either need you to train me or need you to not train me. My dad rose to the occasion. I said, I'll train you. And it wound up being one of the greatest chapters in my life. That's good. And then, so you pause it, go to the next video, it's on the other tab. So think about the language there. Like he said, so this is how my brain works. When I hear him say, uh, you know, I'm done, I'm done. And he said, my gut is telling me that I'd like to, and then finish that sentence in your own head. And think about the key areas of your life that you'd like to make a pivot point. Like, what is your gut telling you, and how would you finish that sentence? Because as you're thinking of that, what most of us do is we have a circle, right? We'll talk about relationships here this afternoon. We have a circle of people around us, consciously or unconsciously, that help either validate that I'd like to or negate it. And here's the deal. Your best friend cannot tell what's in your mind and in your heart and in your soul. They could, so the, the, they could guide you. They could, they could counter if that's the relationship, but only you can see this. Only you can fill out that thing. So let's go to the next thing because this, this one here then goes, because if, if you don't do it, you're never going to be able to create the, like what this lady did. I mean, let's say none of us ever do this. But the place, I, what I'm curious about when you see J.K. Rowling sold, sold over 450 million books, right? What I'm always curious about, what did they tap into, right, that's sitting there? So the only way I could either figure it out is what behavioral patterns are they doing or what mental processes did they run, right? So let's check out her story briefly here. This is around Oprah. I obviously like Oprah. While you can her tell, young but. daughter slept by her side. But isn't it interesting that in the first book, when Harry is being dropped off at his uncle's, it is predicted. One one day, every child in the world will know his name. One day, every child in the world will know (laughs) his name. Well, the screenwriter... So didn't you know? No. Was there part of you subconsciously that knew? Yes. I remember once, and it was like, a, it was like, um, well, like, I'm going to call it clash, a flash of clairvoyance now. Obviously, if it hadn't come true, it would just be yes. some random crazy thought yeah, I'd yes. had. But I do remember one day writing Philosopher's Stone. I was walking away from the cafe where I'd been working. Philosopher's Stone, which became which, Sorcerer's Which became Sorcerer's Stone, mm-hmm. exactly. So that's the first novel. Mm-hmm. And I had this moment where I suddenly thought, it was like a, another voice speaking to me, and the voice said, 
the difficult thing is going to be to get published. If it's published, it will be huge. Wow. And that is exactly what it was. So there was some hint that the voice had said to you. Well, the thing is, you've got to believe, haven't you? Yes. You know, I was, I was not the world's most secure person. Um, I wasn't someone with an enormous amount of... In fact, I'd say I was someone with not much self-belief at all. And yet in this one thing in my life, I believed. That was the one thing in my life. I felt I can tell a story. Is it true that it just... And, you know, I've heard the legend is that it just... The story just entered your head while on a yeah, train. That is, yeah, that's true. That is true. I had been right... All I ever wanted to do from... As, from the age at which you understand that books are written, they don't mm. just spontaneously grow up out of the ground. Which for you is about six... Yeah, mm -hmm. five or six, that's all I ever wanted to be. Was a writer? Yeah, I wrote compulsively all through my late teens, into my 20s, and, but I'd never really found the right thing, you know? And then I was on a train, I was 25, and it came, and what came was, boy doesn't know he's a, he's a wizard, goes to wizarding school. Bang, bang, bang. Look and then that was talking. it, and that was like touch paper, and I was on this delayed train going from Manchester to London, and my head was just flooding with what's at this wizard school. There are four houses. There are ghosts. There are house ghosts. Uh, what do they teach? What subjects do they learn? Who are the teachers? And I, I had no pen. And I, but that was it. That was it. I, and I, had, I don't think I had ever felt so excited. I thought I'd love to write that. I'd never thought about writing for children. I'd never thought about aiming anything at that age group. And yet it was the thing that I was meant to write, you know, because I'd always been fascinated by folklore. I That's love good. kooky word. I know. That's good, guys. You can pause it and turn the lights back up. So listen to the language patterns there, right? So she talks about how she had a, vo a voice talking to her and then how her whole life, check this out, her whole life, she knew she was meant to write, but she never thought she'd ever write a child, a children's book. She never thought she would be in this, finish that sentence. I mean, Ed, did you ever think your entire life you'd ever be running a frickin' hospital? No way, dude. Did you ever think you'd actually retire from uh, internet porn? Anyhow, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> like, your pathway is not there, but now, so here's the thing. In the book, Time Collapsing, the third chapter is about friction, okay? We're not going to go into it here today that much. But friction is because all of us came here with momentum, whether you feel it or not or know it or not. So every story that I shared with you about my timeline led me to the point in my life that made it possible to have the fast uh, peaks of success followed by more rocky stuff and peaks of success. It all added up. It all was there. It was all part of the directional pull, correct? <clears throat> So my first thing here today, as we get ready to, we're going to take a break here in a minute, but like, if the voice came to you and said, this is what you were meant to do, and it's talking to you, the question I have is, are you open to it, and are you leaving room in your life to go create it? That, that's a good one, right? Are we leaving room? So it's, on my way down here. My phone, like, buzzed. I looked down at it, and it said $15 because you've exceeded the uh, usage amount. And I kind of chuckled. <clears throat> and I thought, isn't that funny? Can you imagine if we were actually taxed, literally, every time we overcommit or overdo or overrun ourselves? Right? And I actually was going to say earlier, but you guys have all been nice to not be on your phones the whole time I'm talking, is that... By not being present, you're actually being taxed because you're missing out on what's about happening right in front of you. So, uh, check this out. We got one little exercise. You're going to love it. <clears throat> so, these are a couple of things here, but this is one of my favorite exercises. It's called the freedom question process. Now, when people say, like, well, Ed, how do I begin? Because my, my question is, like, well, how do you begin thinking bigger and thinking differently? And one of the things that I realized by listening to these interviews and being around the people, and you'll see it today with some of our guest speakers and tomorrow with some of our speakers, is, is they ask the question like, you just say this, say this phrase, wouldn't it be great if, dot, dot, dot. And you just start filling in the void off that. 
Wouldn't it be great if my business was throwing off X amount of dollars every month on autopilot? Wouldn't it be great if the exact people who would be perfect for my team to help me operate, to fall in love with our mission, our vision, came into my life and helped execute on the stuff? Like what the guys are doing at Organifi, I mean, Jamal, um, you know, uh, Cherie, they're with Drew Canoli's team. I mean, like Drew, I love Drew, but Drew would not be able to op- run and operate what he's created or what they've created. That's the right term, you know, and we'll have them talking a little bit later. Um, what Vinny's done at Fully Accountable and Total CEO, I mean, Rachel's out in the hallway, I think, and like building the team, right? The, the right team members. Um, wouldn't it be great if I was able to uh, have a, you know, insert the physical fitness level that you want, right? And enjoy working out. You know, most of you, the reason why, the reason why, like, I think exercise and fitness is vital to reach this next level, like I talked about the space, is because the space, you need to use, sometimes use the physical, the physical is, is one of the easiest doorways to go into this space, right? Because the physical, all you got to do is push yourself to the point where you hurt. And now you got to like enter and talk to those demons and be like, oh, here's that little voice that's been telling me I suck all these years. Oh, I'm going to show you. How are you going to show it? Just by not quitting. Right? You know, I love, the reason I love CrossFit is because I show up, what I got to do is on the board. I just do the thing that's on the board and I do it with the effort that I need to push through. Uh, and then I'm done. I'm done. I get to go through it. But wouldn't it, wouldn't it be great if, and I'll just walk through that, okay? So we're going to take, um, <clears throat> wouldn't it be, uh, we're going to take 10 minutes right now. So the music man is going to try on some music. 10 minutes are going to happen. Um, during that time frame, I'd like, I'd like to ask you that you spend a minimum of five minutes on the wouldn't it be great if. I don't care if you hit the bathroom first and then come back. Once you come back, we're going to, uh, uh, I'll release you. We're going to get ready for Mr. Dan Reutman. Dan, uh, is an amazing character and I'll tell you more about him in a second. But, um, uh, is there any questions about this exercise? Yeah, sorry, bud. I got a little excited. Sometimes I start getting a little excited. All right. So in 10 minutes, we're going to meet right back here and then I will talk for a few minutes. We'll let you go. All right. Music, please. <laughs> 